Hi, it's Paul Maunder from Production Expert. As a long-term user of Isotope RX, I'm now so used to it as my go-to noise reduction solution that it's become almost second nature for me to send any noisy audio from Pro Tools to RX, process it as necessary, and then send it back to Pro Tools and render the result to the timeline. However, there are many other noise reduction tools available, and one which I've been trying out recently is Acoustica from Acon Digital. Acoustica is an audio editor suitable for recording, editing, restoration work, and even mixing and mastering. In this video, I'll be trying out Acoustica using a similar workflow to how I usually use RX, sending noisy audio from Pro Tools, processing it, and then sending it back again. This won't be a comparison between Isotope RX and Acoustica, but rather a quick look at using Acoustica in conjunction with Pro Tools for noise reduction. Acoustica from Acon Digital comes in two versions. They're both priced in GB pounds. The standard edition is priced at 49.90 and the premium edition which we'll be looking at is 169.90. The premium edition comes with more advanced features including spectral editing and multi-channel support up to Dolby Atmos 7.1.2. We'll really only be scratching the surface here, but let's jump in and take a look. Firstly, a very quick tour of the interface. This is customizable, but in the default layout shown here, we have the toolbar, a waveform overview, and the clip editor below it. If you zoom in by scrolling with your mouse, the area of the waveform shown in the clip editor is indicated by these yellow markers in the waveform overview. There's also a level meter showing the current output level, a media file browser for importing clips, a region list which shows a list of stuff already in the project, and a label list. Labels are a bit like markers where you can identify points in a recording and jump to them. To the right of this is the processing chain where you can add plugins and open them by clicking on the name. There's a loudness meter which displays the momentary, short-term and integrated loudness in LUFs, along with the loudness range in LU. Then we've got the spectrum analyzer which shows the frequency spectrum of the output audio, so this is post-processing. Finally, there's a correlation meter which, for stereo files, indicates the phase relationship between the left and right channels. Moving back into Pro Tools, I've got a few different clips here which will work with one at a time. The first is badly clipped. Hi everybody, it is wonderful to be here. It's the first time in three years that we've had an opportunity to be in person. When you install Acoustica, you have the option of installing plug-in versions of many of the processing tools for use in various doors. In this case, I could just process it without leaving Pro Tools, but let's take a look at the workflow for actually working with it in Acoustica itself. There's an audio suite plugin called Transfer to Acoustica. Open this, and the selected clip is automatically sent to Acoustica. Now that the clip is open, we can go to our processing chain area and add the D-Clip 2 plugin, which is under the Enhancement section. Okay, let's take a listen. Hi everybody, it is wonderful to be here. It's the first time in three years that we've had an opportunity to be in person, get a chance to meet new colleagues, whether it's ones that joined during the middle of the pandemic or a chance to see old colleagues who it's been so long since we've had an opportunity to be with. Okay, I'm doing this quickly, but that seems pretty good. So let's just apply that. And just before we proceed, I want to mention the importance of turning down the output gain when using D-Clip. This is something which I overlooked when I first started using this, but it's critical because D-Clip algorithms reconstruct clipped peaks, and so you need to leave enough headroom for this to happen effectively. Okay, let's send this back into Pro Tools by clicking Render. And now you can see it's rendered to the timeline. Let's just take a listen. Hi everybody, it is wonderful to be here. It's the first time in... That's a good result. Okay, moving on. The next file has some wind noise. I think because there are more eyes on each student's story, the net of people who can spot a potential problem is quite a lot tighter than it was before. Okay, so send this into Acoustica again. And this time we're going to use D-Wind Dialog. Let's just see what this sounds like at the default settings. I think because there are more eyes on each student's story, the net of people who can spot a potential problem is quite a lot tighter than it was before. Already it's quite reasonable. It's a little bit thin sounding perhaps. If you want to check what's being removed from the signal, you can solo the noise and just hear the bits that you're actually taking out. Let's try that. I think because there are more eyes on each student's story, the net of people who can spot a potential problem is quite a lot tighter than it was before. Okay, that's pretty good. And we'll apply those settings. So let's just make a selection, click apply, and then send those back to Pro Tools. I think because there are more eyes on each student's story, the net of people who can... The next one 
is an example of what you should not do, which is recording audio with lots of pops. Pops can be a problem in places where people pronounce plosives with no pop filter. Send it into Acoustica again, and going into the processing chain section, this time we'll try deplosive dialogue. Pops can be a problem in places where people pronounce plosives with no pop filter. That's actually quite good to begin with, but once again we'll solo the noise and just see what we're actually taking out. We don't want to go too overboard with it. Maybe a 60 dB reduction is more than we really need. So I'll drop that down a bit and then take a listen. That's of course what we're taking out, but let's hear the signal itself now. Pops can be a problem in places where people pronounce plosives with no pop filter. Again, that's a decent result, so let's apply these settings and then click on render to send it back to Pro Tools. Pops can be a problem in places where people pronounce plosives with no pop filter. And we'll just send one more into Acoustica, which is this one which has been recorded outside with birds in the background. If you make a recording outside, bird noise can be a problem. Fortunately, Acon Digital offer a D-Bird processor, which can effectively reduce this noise. One more time, transfer it. And then in the processing chain, again in the enhancement section, we're going to choose D-Bird. If you make a recording outside, bird noise can be a problem. Fortunately, Acon Digital offer a D-Bird processor. Now, if you go too far, as with any noise reduction, it starts to introduce artifacts. So I've, I've really pushed this, take a listen to this, and you'll hear some slightly strange things creeping into my voice. If you make a recording outside, bird noise can be a problem. Fortunately, Acon Digital offer a D-Bird processor, which can effectively reduce... So I think we should back off that control a little bit. Once again, solo the noise, take a listen. You can see in the frequency spectrum here, the parts which are actually being removed are highlighted in yellow. So realistically, we're going for a reduction rather than a complete elimination of noise in this case. If you make a recording outside, bird noise can be a problem. Fortunately, Acon Digital offer a D-Bird processor, which can effectively reduce this noise. Okay, quite good. Apply that, and then send this back. If you make a recording outside, bird noise can be a problem. Fortunately, a In those four examples so far, I've been sending it to Acoustica, processing it, and then sending it back and rendering it into Pro Tools. But for simple tasks as the ones we've seen, where you only need to apply a single process, you don't necessarily have to send it because, as I mentioned earlier, you do have the plugin versions which are available in your DAW. And in the next example, we're gonna take a look at Extract Dialog. So let me just run this piece of audio. My neighbour has decided to start using a circular saw, so it's an ideal opportunity to get a really noisy recording. So this is going to be a very interesting challenge because that's extremely noisy. So let's take a listen. I'll start with the maximum attenuation at zero and I'll gradually pull this down. My neighbour has decided to start using a circular saw, so it's an ideal opportunity to get a really noisy recording. My neighbour has decided to start using a circular saw, so it's an ideal Noisy recording. Opportunity to get a really noisy recording. Considering the amount of noise, that's a very good result. Let's render it. And just double check it. My neighbour has decided to start using a circular saw, so it's an ideal opportunity to get a really noisy recording. So maybe I've gone a little further with that processing than you might in reality, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how Acoustica Premium Edition can be used in a noise reduction workflow. We've really only begun to touch on what Acoustica is actually capable of, and I'll cover more of the features in future videos, including spectral editing and some of the other noise reduction tools. I think for £170, this is great value and a really useful set of tools for post-production audio. Thanks for watching.